Star Trek Strange New World is set to return to the TOS style of episodic storytelling. And what better way of doing that and taking a look at aliens from a previous Star Trek series? In the words of Captain Pike, let's hit it. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get right into it. The upcoming series of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which will feature the great Captain Christopher Pike in command of the USS Enterprise before the captaincy of James C. Kirk, might be revisiting some legacy Trek alien species from a series of Star Trek Enterprise. Let's take a look. Be warned, this information does come from a leaked set pictures of a final episode of Strange New Worlds. So potential spoilers will be inbound, you have been warned. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Trek Central. You can force follow us on social media as well, all the links are down below in the video description. Let's jump into it. According to several leaked set pictures from the Strange New Worlds production team during filming of a final episode of the upcoming series, Antarans will be showing up with scenes of anti-war protesting. It seems like this final episode of the season will have some anti-war messaging within it. Before we delve deeper into this and what it might mean, let's take a look at the history of the Antarans. For those of you who might not know who they are and how they fit into the Star Trek universe so far. The Antaran species were first introduced in the Enterprise episode The Breach, where the NX-01 Enterprise, under the command of Captain Jonathan Archer, rescued a ship of Antarans. One of the crew was badly injured and required surgery. Who refused aid as the Enterprise's doctor, Phlox, was a Denoblian. There are generations of bad blood between the species of Antarans and the Denoblians, and for good reason too. The Antarans are the targets of several brutal military campaigns by the Denoblians. Yes, the same Denoblians which the ever so happy Dr. Phlox is a member of. However, they weren't so friendly during the 19th century, where the military campaigns caused the death of 20 million Antarans. During these campaigns, it was alleged that Denoblian doctors committed war crimes by experimenting on captured Antarans to learn about their anatomy. Why do you want to save my life? I'm a doctor. Do you believe that saving one Antaran will assuage your guilt for killing millions? I haven't killed anyone. Now you finally have your chance. I assure you, the regeneration procedure is quite safe. If you'll allow me to proceed... You must know a great deal about our anatomy. After what your doctors did to us. This is one of the reasons why Hudak, the injured Antaran brought aboard the Enterprise, refused to be treated by a Denoblian doctor, fearing he might also be experimented on due to the stories he was told of the past conflicts between his and Dr. Phlox's people. I did have nightmares. What? You asked me if I had heard stories as a child about the Antarans. My grandmother lived through the last war. I would lay in my bed at night thinking about her stories, terrified that one of those evil Antarans would climb through my window. I hope your confession makes you feel better, Doctor, but it doesn't change a thing. These conflicts brought bitter prejudice between the two populations. Both sides made the other into faceless enemies that they despise and passed this hatred on into their children. And they didn't try to reconcile with each other even six generations after the wars had ended, not even meeting each other. Dr. Phlox decided to treat the Antaran, despite his prejudice, as he had taught his children to embrace other cultures, and he would be hypocritical if he did not himself. You also asked me if I had children. I have five. And no, I never told them my grandmother's stories. When they asked me about the Antarans, I told them the truth, as best as I knew it. I told them about our military campaigns against your people, about how we had demonized you, turned you into a faceless enemy. I wanted them to learn to judge people for what they really are, not what the propaganda tells them. After Haduk was told about how Phlox had taught his children to not fear the Antarans and to make opinions based on experiences, Haduk eventually allowed Phlox to save his life and let himself be operated on by someone who only hours prior he despised. You made me think about my own family. I have children as well. I've decided to accept your treatment. Hudak, with his own children, would later go on to tell his children this and teach him in similar ways to how Phlox taught his children about accepting others. Now, the legacy of Hudak, and by extension, Dr. Phlox, may be what we might see in Star Trek Strange New Worlds. As stated previously, the set pictures seem to have Antarans in them, carrying placards and signs which say messages like Stop Fighting, 
stopped war, and no pride in genocide. A bit of a ring to it. Credit to George Hillebrandt, who is amazing able to translate these signs. It also pictures a signpost saying Fire Route and Department of Defense. So presumably this riot is happening outside a building related to the Department of Defense. And we're deciding to go to war with someone, and some population is against that. I don't know, a little bit sparse information at the minute. We see groups of not only Antaran civilians, but also what to be appear Antaran scientists. They're clad in scientific looking outfits, and one shot but even following someone in a red dress. Who could be some sort of leader of the Antaran government, perhaps? Now, if there is a protest on the planet, why is this going to involve Pike's Enterprise? If it's Antaran, then at this time could possibly be a Federation member. We know there were at least Antarans in Starfleet during the 2380s, so 100 years later. We do not know if Antarans have actually joined the Federation. If they have joined the Federation, it would make sense why the Enterprise is sent there, possibly to stop them from going to war, as it's probably seen that the Federation members shouldn't really conduct wars. Bear in mind, there is a lot of precedent for Federation members during the original series era to not be the pinnacles of virtue they have to be by the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine era. During the time of DS9, you can't become a Federation member if you have the crash system in place, or if you have an unstable government. But during the TOS era, the rules of Federation were slightly more lax. It could also be viewed that Federation membership rules are lessened during times of conflict, as we see this with Yavar during Star Trek Insurrection where the Federation expedited their application in order to recover losses suffered during the Battle of Sector 001 and during the Dominion War. This could be a similar practice now, after the Klingon Federation War and the control incident seen in Star Trek Discovery's first two seasons. However, what if the Antarans weren't Federation members at this point in time? Then the reason for the Enterprise visit simply could be that the Antarans have decided to go to war against a Federation member, and that member could be none other than the Denoblians themselves. It would stand to reason that the Denobians would have had an early membership to the Federation, being present during both the talks for the Coalition of Planets and the founding of the United Federation of Planets. The Antaran government might have decided to declare war on the Denoblians, giving in to the hate against the Denoblian people. Rioters then, who are protesting against the war, could be the children of people like Hadak and Phlox. Parents who teach their children that Denoblians are not this faceless enemy, and that the sins of a father are not the sins of a son which is a message Star Trek has gone into before. With such a storyline, you're not only going to have Star Trek Enterprise references, which are sorely needed in modern Trek, but an interesting story about generational hatred and how we should not give in to it in order to make a better world. Star Trek Strange New World should strive towards such messages in their episodes, echoing that of previous Trek and not having such messages be a result of a whole season of episodes, but of standalone episodes to get across a larger breadth of message, about how to strive towards not only a better future, but a better self. What do you think about this? And if it was to bring back something from the Star Trek Enterprise era of the universe, what would you bring back? Let us know in the comment section as per usual. You know we love Star Trek Enterprise around here. You do know we came here to rescue three Denobulan geologists? Flux told me. I understand they'll be heading home on your transport. I hope that won't be a problem. Have they been informed that I'll be traveling with them? I had a talk with them. What was their response? They're willing. If you are. That's a wrap on our latest video here on the Trek Central channel. Of course, we're talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds all the time. Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section as per usual. Because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow along for the latest information via our social media channels, join our community discord, visit our website or many other things. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching and uh, live long and prosper my friends, I'll see you next time.